So guys, we've kind of started something a little new here where we do these deep dive reviews of certain exotics. Our first one was actually Leviathan's Breath, showcasing why that heavy exotic bow is meta this season. Today though, our next weapon is actually none other than Revision Zero. And considering it's almost time for Grandmasters here in Season Defiance, also considering it's getting so many buffs, this pulse rifle is only gonna get better. Now, just like Vexcalibur, Revision Zero also had that same splash introduction with its fantastic exotic mission, week over week improvement, Improvements, multiple catalysts, and a built-in sniper. But really, since we actually crafted the final version of Revision Zero, it's kind of fallen out of the discussion. But with the big changes coming to Revision Zero and the combined superpowers of frame-by-frame -frame analysis and basic math, we can see where this undeniably unique pulse rifle will fit into the meta of Destiny 2 and why we should be talking about it. Now, firstly, let's begin with the breakdown of Revision Zero's current performance. To address the elephant in the room, this gun currently cannot be acquired. I know a few twelve back i said i was gonna let you know how to acquire this exotic well turns out you can't which is pretty harsh bungie come on now it was rewarded for completing and repeating the season 19 exotic mission operation seraph shield which was removed with the launch of life vault bungie has announced an exotic mission rotator though that will be coming in season 22 which won't be next season but the season after which will include seraph shield so if you do not have this exotic don't worry you will eventually get access to it and believe me when we start diving into the numbers and start talking about the potential damage buffs that this weapon will be receiving, you are gonna wanna get it. This exotic will play a key part in the sandbox moving forward. It has three core features that define it. Number one, Hunter's Trace. This weapon fires special shield piercing ammunition. Precision hits grants targeting data. Press Alt Fire to swap to the alternate scope, loading high damage round space on the amount of targeting data. In short, you land 12 crits and you get a free sniper shot and you could store up to four of these sniper shots. Now number two, Light and Heavy Burn. Hockey Pulse Rifles, for those interested in lore gameplay connections, typically shoot in a four-shot burst. And these are these high-damage bursts instead of the typical three shots. Now, Revision Zero can actually toggle between a four-round burst mode, which is the light mode, and a two-round burst mode, which is the heavy mode. And this is the only other two-shot pulse rifle outside of Graviton Lance, which does lead to speculation like, are we going to get two-round burst legendaries? Possible. Just look at Dead Man's Tail and Long Arm, right? Now, the thing about the two-round burst, it does do more damage damage and have more range and we're going to get into the differences between these two burst modes but what i do want you to take note of with revision zero is how much the stats change depending on the burst mode that you choose now number three multiple catalysts we're actually seeing more of this approach to exotic weapons but revision zero was the first one to start things off the excalibur also has multiple catalysts which is acquired from the avalon mission but understand when we were given this with revision zero this was a groundbreaking addition it's barrel mag and stock are all customized with the Enclave on Mars, but its range and stability are best in class. With its light burst selected, range is between 71 and 91. Even at the low end, you'd have to be pretty far away before you see damage fall off. Stability is also similarly great, going from 60 all the way up to 100, literally maxing out. And a lot of this is due to the fact that the intrinsic perks of the weapon also amplifies the stats. With each consecutive upgrade, you're getting these major bumps in your stats across the board. Now, stat readouts default to the light burst values when you're shaping or reshaping this weapon, but switching to the heavy burst raises your range stat by 25 and lowers stability by 20. Where the weapon does start to struggle though is in the handling and reload department. Handling ranges from 20 to 45, while reload speed is 23 to 58. We actually tested this at 60 frames per second, and that's a reload of 171 frames at the low end and 119 frames at the high end. So always somewhere between two to three seconds without any loader mods equipped. Now I understand guys, and I know Bex Calibur has been out now pretty much a month but this level of flexibility was something we have never seen in exotics before and with range and stability so good with this weapon essentially being three weapons in one from its two round burst mode to its four round burst mode to its sniper mode we have to ask the question why is revision zero not in the meta conversation well this actually takes us to revisions damage output as well as its competition now we're going to give you three sets of damage to account for considering this weapon is essentially a three and one we're going to give you damage values for the light burst fire the heavy burst fire as well as the Hunter's Trace Sniper Rounds. Now, running all of our numbers here at Carl, our four-round burst, which is our light burst mode, hits red bars for 2,018 per body damage and 3,422 per crit. On majors, that's 1,019 per body and 1,728 per crit. Now, at 450 rounds per minute, which is our rate of fire here on our four-shot burst mode, this gives us a DPS ceiling of 25,665 against minors and 12,690 against majors. Now, moving into the two-shot heavy 
Happy Burst Mode. This hits red bars for 2,987 for Bonnie and 4,773 per crit. Against majors, it's 1,509 per Bonnie and 2,411 per crit. Now for DPS, the weapon still states it's 450 rounds per minute, but the actual RPM of this comes closer to 300 rounds per minute. That leaves us with a max of 23,865 damage against minors and 12,055 against majors. So again, this is lower damage than that of the light burst mode. Keep in mind, it's doing more damage per shot, but less DPS overall. More on that here in just a moment. Now, the Hunter's Trace Sniper is in its own category. First, it takes 12 crits with either the light or heavy burst to load a single sniper shot. Once loaded, this alt fire actually hits miners for 28,795 per body and 86,667 per crit. On majors, it's 14,543 per body and 43,771 per crit. Now, this is a ginormous bump here in damage, guys. Essentially, a 300% crit multiplier and a hefty amount of damage. And the beautiful thing about that sniper rifle shot is that you can carry it target to target. You can build up those four shots and then unload it on a high health target. Now, in PvP, this actually translates pretty much one to one. It still takes 12 shots to load a sniper shot with a max capacity of four. Light crits do 27 damage, while heavy crits do 37. Now, Hunter's Trace does 159 damage per body, but 476 per crit, easily getting you the one hit kill on crit shots, even going so far as to shut down opposing supers. If you do take the time to get that shot, it is so satisfying when you land that one hit kill. Now back to PvE. Now I know things are looking a bit wonky with our damage, but it gets worse when we actually start to compare it to other competing exotics. Outbreak Perfected, for instance. Its major crits at Carl hit for 1743 at 450 rounds per minute, giving us damage just barely above Revision Zero Light Burst. But due to its exotic traits and Seven Nanites, this can actually buff the damage considerably. Nanites doing around 2500 each, and the buff against enemies with Siva on them make individual shots do up to 4,616 damage. This is a staggering improvement. And then when we compare it here to Graviton Lance, considering it's a two round burst pulse, it doesn't look too hot either. Graviton now is very different despite it being a two round burst. Both its first and second shot in the burst do different amounts of damage. And against majors, the burst does a total of 5,807. And at 257 rounds per minute, that's a max DPS of 12,436, which is more than that of Revision Zero. Then of course, when you add in things like Cosmology and those exploding targets on final blows, volatile rounds, all that good stuff. It's clear that Graviton Lance is the better two round burst. Now, Cloud Strike crits majors at 21,614, which is just over half of Revision Hunter's traits. But you have seven shots in a mag. On top of that, we have Triple Tap as its catalyst, Lightning Strikes that do just as much damage as its crits. We have a very nice buff coming to Rapid Fire Sniper Rifles, which will include Cloud Strike. So this may seem like out of the blue to kind of compare these two, but I definitely wanted to keep the comparisons between exotics. Now, all this is happening in a season with anti-barrier pulse rifles on a seasonal artifact. Revision Zero already has anti-barrier intrinsically. Needless to say, you can get the job done with pretty much any other pulse rifle, whether it's Outbreak, Graviton Lance, Collective Obligation. They can essentially do the same job, but even better. Now, when you consider all this information, the problem with Revision Zero does become a bit clearer. A jack of all trades is a master of none. We ran into the same issue back with Kvostov and Destiny 1. Now, granted, it's undeniably unique, but is that uniqueness more valuable than guns that fit a specialized role or frankly, just do more damage? It seems that Bungie's been asking the same questions because incoming updates are going to substantially improve Revision Zero. Now, stated in the TWA back on March the 30th, the following changes to Revision Zero will be coming in a mid-season update, which is very soon. First, they're going to be increasing the PvE damage of Hunter's Trace rounds by 25%. That is a whopping damage buff. They're also increasing PvE damage of the Hake Heavy Burst rounds by 75%. Quote, this will now make it more of a trade-off when choosing between the origin perks, either dealing more damage in the primary mode, but charging Hunter Traces more slowly, or dealing less damage, but charging the bonus shots more quickly. Essentially, guys, that is the trade-off between the four-round burst mode and the two-round burst mode. Considering the slower rate of fire in the two-round burst mode, you actually reach those Hunter Trace sniper rifle shots slower than you would if you were using the four-round burst mode. In this situation, Bungie is actually giving you a clear advantage in terms of damage in the two-round burst mode with that 75% damage buff. Now, this is definitely a step in the right direction. A heavy burst should feel heavier. Now, there's also an additional 20% buff on all pulse rifles, which is coming in a mid-season patch, which means heavy burst shots with a combined 95% damage buff should hit Carl for 2,943 per body and 4,701 per crit for a max DPS of approximately 23,505. Now, that is miles ahead of Graviton Lance. Now, for the light burst damage, this will only be getting the 20% damage buff, bringing its damage against Carl to 1,220 
2023 per body and 2073 per crit for a total of 15,548 DPS. Now, it's unclear whether or not the pulse rifle buff will affect Hunter's Trace because it's also unclear whether or not the 10% sniper rifle buff will take effect as well. We're actually going to be retesting this after the update goes live to confirm, but we can still calculate the 25% damage buff. Hunter's Trace will now hit for at least 54,714. For a primary weapon, that is extremely impressive. Like, look at the sniper rifle damages of other sniper rifles like Darcy, Cloud Strike, and even Whisper. It's extremely impressive that Hunter's Trace is going to be pulling this damage, and it's a primary weapon. And we'll have to see whether that climbs to either 59,091 with that sniper rifle buff or the 20% pulse rifle buff, which would increase it to 63,468, which would be nuts. Now, they're also going to be addressing an unintended interaction between Hunter's Trace and Four Times the Charm. Four Times the Charm will now be reset when entering Hunter's Trace, and this will prevent the issue of firing a single shot in Hunter's Trace and being forcibly returned to the post rifle mode when Four Times the Charm activates. Now, what this also does is that this keeps us from firing eight sniper rifle shots in a row. Now, you're probably wondering across how in the world can you even fire that many shots? Well, if you actually have Four Times the Charm and you have four sniper rifle shots and you fire all four of them, you refund yourself too. And this is actually two sniper rifle shots created from thin air. It's really nice. However, if you're shooting the two round burst mode, previously you could fire two shots in the two round burst mode, hit your alternate fire mode, swap it to its sniper rifle mode, and then fire two more shots. This will proc four times the charm, giving you two rounds back for a total of four. Then you fire those four again, and it will give you two more rounds back. And then you fire those final two, thus eight of these sniper rifle shots in a row. This change will also keep that from happening. All around the board, Revision Zero is looking nastier and nastier. Now, none of this changes the fact that the current seasonal perks make Revision Zero's competitors strong choices in in-game PvE. But in six weeks, when the seasonal artifact perks change, this gun might have a little more room to breathe. And I actually think it's going to have more room to breathe even before then, especially with the 75% buff to its two-round burst mode and the 25% buff to its sniper rifle mode. Regardless though, anti-barrier sniper rifles are always a community favorite. And this weapon has that intrinsically. And it does more damage than other snipers. So our conclusion, Revision Zero hasn't had much time in the spotlight, but there's hope for the future. These buffs will make each of this gun's mini utilities stand out from each other and finally compete with weapons that match each utility. Revision Zero has always been a great utility weapon, but never a great source of damage. But that's all about the change. Once this mid-season update is live, we'll be repeating some of the tests that you saw us do previously this year, and we'll be comparing it against a lot of other weapons, including other primaries. We actually did a primary weapon damage comparison back inside of January, and it was impressive to see where everything sat. Now, for those of you that did not grab this weapon last season, don't worry, guys. We're expecting it to be back this summer. I wish the exotic mission rotator was going to be put in next season, but season 22 will be getting it. But for those of you that do have it, as soon as these changes do go live, we'll be testing this extensively. Guys, if you like these full breakdowns of these exotics, a like on this video is very much appreciated. A lot of work is put into them. Tons of testing here, and we want to do this with a lot of different exotics. So think of this as almost like a super deep dive into what's meta or what could potentially be meta. Also, if you have a weapon that you want us to look at next, feel free to comment them down below. It's a good chance that'll be our next deep breakdown. But fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. <laughs>